Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today we celebrate the 32nd Thursday in Ordinary Time, and the Church today remembers Saints Trypho, Respicius, and Nympha. St. Trypho was born at Kipsada in what was then known as Phrygia, which is now Turkey. And he, as a boy, he took care of geese, but he became a Christian and w in the year 250 was tortured horribly. He was beheaded with a sword after he converted the heathen prefect Lysias. St. Respicius was Trypho's companion, and Nympha was a virgin martyr from Palermo who was put to death for her faith. So, St. Trypho, Respicius, and Nympha, for your witness to the faith even unto death, we ask you to please, please pray for us today. So, let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, so that by following your holy will we may gain eternal salvation. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us take a moment to confess our sins to God in ways that we have failed him and our neighbor in thought, word, deed, and omission, so that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. Please now make an examination of your conscience. say together the second form of the confidier found on page 66 I confess to Almighty God in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary all the saints and you my brothers and sisters that I have sinned through my own fault in my thoughts and my words and what I have done or failed to do I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary all the saints and you my brothers and sisters to pray for me to the Lord our God for your penance I would ask you to say to our fathers and to Hail Mary's May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And may our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me, I absolve you from all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed may you be, O Lord, God of Israel, our Father, from eternity to eternity. Yours, O Lord, are grandeur and power, majesty, splendor, and glory, for all in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours, O Lord, is the sovereignty. Therefore, our God, we give you thanks and we praise the majesty of your name. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord our God, you are the God of the living, and you have raised us to life in the resurrection of your Son. May we, for whom death is now a shadow, rest ever secure in your promises. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Philemon. Beloved, I have experienced much joy and encouragement from your love because the hearts of the holy ones have been refreshed by you, brother. Therefore, although I have the full right in Christ to order you to do what is proper, I rather urge you out of love, being as I am, Paul, an old man, and now also a prisoner for Christ Jesus. I urge you on behalf of my child Onesimus, whose father I have become in my imprisonment, who once was useless to you, but now is useful to both you and me. I am sending him, that is, my own heart, back to you. I should have liked to retain him for myself so that he might serve me on your behalf in my imprisonment for the gospel. But I did not want to do anything without your consent so that the good you do might not be forced, but voluntary. Perhaps this is why he he was away from you for a while, that you might have him back forever. No longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a brother. 
beloved, especially to me, but even more so to you as a man and in the Lord. So, if you regard me as a partner, welcome him as you would me. And if he has done you any injustice or owes you anything, charge it to me. I, Paul, write this in my own hand, I will pay. May I not tell you that you owe me your very self. Yes, brother, may I profit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response is, Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob. The Lord secures justice for the oppressed, gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets captives free. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord raises up those who were bowed down. The Lord loves the just. The Lord protects the strangers. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob. The fatherless and the widow he sustains, but the way of the wicked he thwarts. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, through all generations. Alleluia. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the vine, you are the branches, says the Lord. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit. Alleluia, alleluia. May Almighty God cleanse my heart and my lips that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, Jesus said in reply, The coming of the kingdom of God cannot be observed. And no one will announce, Look, here it is, or there it is. For behold, the kingdom of God is among you. Then he said to his disciples, The days will come when you will long to see one of the days of the Son of Man, but you will not see it. There will be those who will say to you, Look, there he is, or look, here he is. Do not go off, do not run in pursuit, for just as lightning flashes and lights up the sky from one side to the other, so will the Son of Man be in his day. But first, he must suffer greatly and be rejected by this generation. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, our first reading is from a book we don't hear too much about, and that's the letter of St. Paul to Philemon. Philemon was a man who owned slaves, which was common in the day, and one of those slaves was Onesimus, whom Paul had the opportunity to instruct and work with and convert to be a Christian. And Paul here is writing from jail. He was imprisoned for preaching the gospel. And he writes on behalf of Onesimus, trying to secure Onesimus' freedom since he is now a Christian. And he's trying to convince Philemon that Onesimus is now no longer a slave, but a brother in Christ. Indeed, we as Christians, cannot enslave one another. Today, in 2022, we know that. We know that in spades. That slavery is so very wrong. It wasn't always seen as that way. In fact, it's a fairly recent phenomenon from the 19th century onward. And so, too, is really holding dominion over another living person. That's one of the reasons, other than the fact that it's pure murder, that abortion is so wrong. Abortion is the new slavery. Abortion is holding our will over the will of another human being to the point where we take their very lives. So if we transfer this letter of Philemon, Paul to Philemon, instead of slave to baby, does that not take on a new perspective? Just something to think about. Then moving into our gospel, 
Jesus, because we are in the final days of ordinary time, is talking about the end times, the kingdom, the coming of the kingdom. And he says it over and over again in different ways that we don't know when the end will come. But the kingdom of God does exist among us. And we would be good, it would be good for us to act that way every single day. To act as though the kingdom of God is here, which it is. To treat others as we would like to be treated. Again, not to subject our will onto another, but to allow them to live in true and complete freedom. True and complete freedom which comes from Christ alone. That is why so much that is going on today is from the evil one. Because the powers that be want to put more and more power and control on us. That is not the way Christ designed humanity. He designed us to be free to choose to worship him. And if we do not choose to worship him, there are natural consequences to that. If we do not choose to follow his laws, there are natural consequences to that. Okay? So that is why it is incumbent upon us it is our duty as Christians to always follow the laws of Christ that are not meant to, again, to constrain us, but to give us true and ultimate freedom and eventually our inheritance in the kingdom of heaven. And also it is our duty to work so that each and every single human being has that same opportunity. That's why it is so important that we vote for those people who share that vision to give individuals, to give cities, states, nations, and yes, even the world, the ultimate freedom to choose to follow Christ and his laws and to worship him and not put constraints upon humanity. We're, we're two days out of the U.S. midterms. And we can see the effects of going with oppressors as opposed to those who love true freedom. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us turn now to the Lord with our prayers as we lift up our needs to him in confidence. And our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. The church will be continuously blessed with good and faithful servants following Christ as priests and deacons. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders and candidates for public office, that they may always acknowledge that the source of all law and authority is in God alone. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For our veterans and their families and all those in active duty, that the Lord may protect them and grant them health and stability and may we honor and remember their sacrifices. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all who work to end hunger and homelessness, that God will renew their spirits and help them to never tire of bringing food and life to those in need. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick, especially those on our parish prayer list and their caregivers, that they may find strength and endurance in the love of Christ. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer our own needs and intentions we hold deep in the silence of our hearts and for our nation which is our mass intention today we pray to the Lord Lord hear our prayer for all those who have died and those who will die today that they may enjoy the rewards of eternal life we pray to the Lord Lord hear our prayer almighty God Hear our prayers and grant our petitions according to your will. We ask all these things, spoken and unspoken, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. For everything is from you, and we only give you what we have received from you.
worthless are you, Lord God, of all creation? Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given, and human hands have made, may it become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this wine and water, may we come to share the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, may it become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, and bless this sacrifice which we have prepared for the glory of your holy name. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. Receive this offering, most holy trinity, which we make in memory of the passion, resurrection, ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints. May they whose memory we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice from my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, and for the benefit of his holy church. Heavenly Father, from among the many gifts you have given us, we offer you bread and wine and the service of our lives. Hear us now as we call on your name and bless us with the precious gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Out of love you call us to life. You give us our daily bread and the bread of life. And by your protection and assistance you see to our every need. And so with trust we commend our day to your fatherly care. Therefore with the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy Sacrifice and Mass continues with Eucharistic Prayer 3, which is found on page 84 if you're following along. We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You have formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Gracious God, you loved the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation, the prisoner's freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death and made the whole creation new, and that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us. He sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world, to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The supper with them he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which is given for you. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me.
we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, calling Christ's death and descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and bless you together. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. We pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and this cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember your one holy Catholic and apostolic church redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember Anthony, our prime bishop, Jerry, our bishop, and all who minister in your church. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth, especially all those who are separated from Christ and his church, that the Holy Spirit may bring them back. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ, whose faith is known to you alone, especially our family, and friends and family members who have passed. Bring them into the place of eternal joy and light and grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with our ancestors in faith, with the prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with Saints Trypho, Rospicius, and Nympha, whose memory we keep today, and with all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, creator of all, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching and following divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. Your mercy keep us free from sin, and protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Cup of blessing which we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. The union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Let's say together the second communion prayer found on page 90. I'm sorry, the first communion prayer found on page 97. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you. I will take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. The body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Please join me now in the act of spiritual communion. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. Lord, may I possess the pure heart that which I have taken as food. May the gift I have received bring me healing and strength now and forever.
that I may know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by being conformed to his death. Let us pray. Ever living Father, by the death of your Son, we are saved from death, and in his resurrection we are all renewed. May we who have received your sacraments come to know the victory of eternal life. We ask this to the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me now in the prayer of St. Michael. Holy Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and to you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. So we now pray for peace with the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there's hatred, let me sow love. Where there's injury, pardon. Where there's doubt, faith. Where there's despair, hope. Where there's darkness, light. And where there's sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, thank you so much for joining us for our Holy Mass today. I pray that you can join us tomorrow at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time for Veterans Day, a special Veterans Day Mass. hope that you have a wonderful day. Stay safe, take care of yourself, take care of each other, remain in a state of grace, and fight evil wherever and whenever you find it. Though the mountains may fall and the hills turn to dust, yet the love of the Lord will stand as a shelter for all who will call on his name, sing the praise and the glory of God. Could the Lord ever leave you? Could the Lord forget his love? Though a mother forsake her child, he will not abandon you. Though the mountains may fall and the hills turn to dust, yet the love of the Lord will stand as a shelter for all who will call on his name, sing the praise and the glory of God.